Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love Online. This is our Saturday service. We're reading from Galatians, and I want to challenge you to pick your battles very carefully. All right, now we're going to get into Galatians chapter 5. We're going to read verse 7. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Let me go into this real quick, just so you get what that means. Somebody did an experiment. They had a lump of, of leavened dough and a lump of unleavened dough, already done, kneaded, and prepared. And they took a little pinch of the leavened dough and mixed it in with the unleavened dough, and it made the unleavened dough rise. It just had the same effect as the leaven lump. So what that is saying is a little darkness, a little sin, a little poison can poison the whole thing. So you've got to be careful what you allow in your life. You got to be careful the connections, the relationships you allow in your life, the conversations you allow, the participation, the the things that you ingest into your spirit. You have to be careful because it can sour everything that you work so hard for. Okay, I just want to share that real quick. Now, we're going to continue reading and verse 10. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would, they would even cut off which trouble you. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now I'm going to skip down, and I'm going to read one word, two wo- three words. All right. Verse 20. These are the works of the flesh. Hatred, wrath, strife. I'm only picking those words out. Because that is listed under the category of the works of the flesh. So when you want to read all of them, you read verse. I'll just read them real quick. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lascivious, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, this is what we don't get. There are times when life throws us a bunch of crazy stuff. It hits us on our blind side. In life, there are conflicts. There's no getting around it. It comes with the package. But you have to pick your battles. You have to choose when it's time to fight and when it's time to yield. And I'm going to share this with you because this is what God shared with me. He gave me two examples. Now picture water. Mm Mm-hmm. Imagine water as dealing with God. A lot of people, they don't like to swim. They're afraid of the water. They're afraid they'll drown, whatever. But when you know how to swim, and I do, I love to swim. 
you learn when you're dealing with water, water can be your best friend and water can be your worst enemy. It depends on how you relate to that water. Are you going to fight the water or are you going to yield it to the water and cooperate with it? Check it out. You're going to fight God or, or you're going to yield and cooperate with him and obey him. Listen to this. All the years I wanted to learn how to float. You lay on your back. You want to float. You want to lay there and chill. Well, you can't float if you're fighting the water. But once I learned to relax my legs, my muscles, and I could literally fall asleep on my back in the water. I almost did a few times, dozed off and woke myself up. But what I want to share with you is the more relaxed you are, the easier it is to stay afloat. It really is. I used to always wonder why my legs sunk. Well, now that I know how to float and relax, my legs stay up with the rest of me and I can lay on my back and chill. Now, check this out. I almost drowned three times. I was so determined to learn how to swim. That was not going to stop me. And I learned. I took swim lessons. I, I did all kind of exercises to get to be one with the water, so to speak. Now, uh, check it out. I'm swimming years ago. I'm about maybe 11 years old. And I jump in a 16-foot pool, and all I know how to do is dog paddle. I don't know jack. I can't float. I can't swim. I can't do jack. I jump in, and I realize I'm not feeling the bottom. And what happens? Panic. I, I immediately jump into panic mode. Fear can kill. Panic can kill. I'm telling you now. So instead of me thinking and using my mind, I give in to my emotions and I immediately hit panic mode and I start battling the water. Do you know what happened when I started splashing and flailing and going through all kinds of changes? I kept going down, 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 down. So far that a lifesaver, thank God they were watching me, dove in and pulled me up to safety. And I was able to catch my breath. From that point on, I said, I'm not going to panic again. That's what almost drowned me. I recognized it. I almost drowned because of panic, not because I couldn't swim. Had I relaxed and just let my body just really relax, I would have started to rise back up to the surface. But because I panicked, I had to wait for someone else to come and rescue me. See, when you panic, your and your emotions take over, your mind shuts down. All logic, all bets are off when it comes to logic. M emotions can kill y'all. Panic can kill. Fear can kill. That's why people, when they hold babies in their arms and the baby can't breathe, they're hollering, somebody help, I don't know what to do. Instead of blowing in that baby, pinching the nose, tilting the head back and blowing in that baby or blowing in both the nose and the mouth if they're small enough, blowing the air in and watching the chest rise and go down and call 911 in between breaths and make sure they can come and help you with your baby. But people, when they panic, they let the person go too long without air and the person dies when they could have been blowing the air in and breathing for them. We need to be prepared for all things in our lives. Now, I'm not saying that to lay guilt trips. God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So it's not your fault if you don't know. But if you have a child, if you have family members, it's good to take Red Cross training so that you can save their lives and know what to handle first. Okay, now, 
It's just just good knowledge. That's an aside. Let's get back to the to the to the case. When you are dealing with battling, when you're dealing with water and you battle water, you're going to lose. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to lose. But if you learn to yield with the water, here's another example. One day I was at the beach and I'm sharing this with you to help you understand how life is. There are times there are conflicts in life and it's not time for you to argue, fight, bicker or complain. It's time for you to sit, to be still and shut your mouth. Fold your arms and let the Lord fight your battles. Because you rise to the surface. You won't drown in that case. Now, I was at the beach. I'm sharing this with you. These are little life lessons. I was at the beach with my family. They were sitting around the shore. Somebody hollers, be careful, there's a riptide which means the undercurrent is stronger than the surface of the water. So even though the waves appear to be coming in, there is an undercurrent that has a drag, a strong pull that will pull you further out than that wave will bring you in. So you have to be careful how you swim. And I'm out there floating around having a ball. And next thing I know, Guess what? I look up and I'm treading water just looking to see how, you know, where the shore is. And everybody on the shore looks like little ants. I'm so far out. I had no idea. So I'm swimming in, but I realize it's not working. So God gave me a mind to swim in diagonally. And that's what enabled me to start getting closer to shore. And when my feet hit the bottom, I was like, okay, I'm good now. But I'm not paying attention. Something's coming up from behind. Life will bring something on your blind side and slap you upside your head. You won't know which end is up if you're not careful, if you're not watchful. And because I wasn't watching what was going on around me, a big old wave came and slapped me upside my head. And that thing had me tossed topsy-turvy. I didn't know which end was up. And I started to panic and suck in water. And I had to tell my mind, don't, don't, don't. I had to keep control of my thought life. Do not inhale. Do not inhale. That will be your undoing. Hold on, be still and relax and you will settle. And when whatever hits you will be the bottom, whether it's your shoulder, your head, your back, wherever it hits you, Spin yourself around, put your feet there, and push straight up, push in the opposite direction of that wall. And sure enough, I felt a wall come and hit me on my left shoulder. And I spun myself around, fighting to hold my breath. And I pressed, I bent my knees and shot up, and I was able to, to get in. Now, that would have been another opportunity to drown. That was one of those times I could have drowned. But at that moment, I was determined not to panic, not to yield to my fear, not to yield to the, to the uh, panic mode, not to fight the water, but to yield to the water. See, sometimes you got to yield to a circumstance in order to make it through that thing unscathed. There was a time I was raped at gunpoint. I had to yield to the rape, to the rapist, in order to get out of that situation alive and unharmed. There are times when you have to have wisdom to know when to fight, when not to fight, when to open your mouth, when to shut your mouth, and let the Lord fight your battles. Be still and know that I am God. Some of you do not know how to be still. As soon as, as any kind of conflict comes, you're flaring up. You've got all your claws and all your, you got everything ready to scratch, claw, dig, and fight, kick, whatever you got to do by any means necessary. And you make a not so good situation into a total disaster. 
because you cannot control how you react to other people and circumstances. Your life can be so much easier if you learn to be still, if you learn to shut up. If somebody wants to pick a fight with you, check this out. Here's the map. It takes two to tango. And if you got a person who's argumentative, shut your mouth. Don't sit there and engage. It's just going to get worse. Don't defend yourself. Be quiet. If somebody accuses you of doing something, okay, if that's what you believe, you know, God will settle this. I'm not going to argue it with you. Believe whatever you want to believe. That's it. So I'm telling you, you have to be careful not to fight to defend yourself, not to fight to preserve your reputation, not to fight to win an argument, not to fight for any. No, let God fight your battles. He will win every time. Most of the time, if you engage, you will lose. God will tell you when it's time to fight. And if God tells you to fight, he'll tell you to fight his way, and he will definitely make sure you win. But unless God's telling you to fight, baby, sit down and shut up. Do not panic and worry about what everybody thinks about you who's listening in. Let them listen. Let them think. Don't worry about them. The only one you have to be concerned with is what does God feel about how I'm handling this? Stop fighting the water. You will drown. Stop fighting your assailant. You can be harmed. Stop doing that. You don't need to do that. God says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. All right. Now, here's another thing. When you battle, the one thing you want to fight, and that's one thing, unfortunately, too many Christians forget to do so. They are too afraid and intimidated to do so. But this is a fight you should always put up, baby cakes. You fight those demons that attack you. You get a demon attacking you, you're having a wonderful day, everything's going great, and depression sits on you like a ton of bricks, rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Don't become one with the depression. You're having a nice day, nothing's going wrong, and all of a sudden anger rises up inside of you for no reason. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus rebuke you. You've got to rebuke everything that would align itself with the works of darkness. Rebuke the temptation. You get a mind to look at something on the internet. No, rebuke it. You get a temptation to call that young lady in the middle of the night to see if if she'd like to go out and have some coffee. Rebuke it. It's too late. Too many things happen. Leave it alone. You know you don't want coffee. You know what you want. Rebuke it. Sitting up there yielding because you a man and you got needs. Uh Uh-uh. No, sorry. That ain't going to fly with God. Saying stuff like, well, God knows my heart. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? And you do too. So rebuke your own heart if you have to. Rebuke the desires of your flesh if you have to. But fight. That's what you fight. You fight temptation. You fight the works of darkness. You fight tendencies that you know lean to the flesh. You fight those nasty thoughts that carry you in the wrong direction. That's when you fight. Put up your dukes, baby. What you sitting down, giving in for. That ain't your God. Fight. What you doing? Sitting up there talking about, well, no, 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 no. No, that's not the time to be passive, baby. 
that's the time to grab yourself by the balls and show yourself a real follower of Christ and say, I will not, I will not, I refuse. No, no, I put my foot down. No, in Jesus' name, no. But you rather fight God and fight the water and fight life and fight arguments and fight all kind of silly arguments and silly strife situations, little jealousy thing. You have all these other things you want to fight, petty stuff that don't add up to a hill of beans. And you get into a knockdown, drag out fight over nothing. And let the devil rape your butt left and right. Let the devil beat you down and drag you around by the nose. Like he's got you on a leash. Come here. And you <laughs> you ain't putting up a fight. You're not kicking. You're not scratching. You're not resisting. What's up with that? The Bible told you to fight. But no, you fight the wrong battles. What you, no, 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 don't say that about me. No, that's not true. And you just got that back and forth over nonsense while the devil's got you over here going for the okie doke, going for his tricks, left and right, falling for every trick bag he's got for you. And you don't even use the name of Jesus that you have in your arsenal. You don't use the power of the Holy Ghost to resist the devil and obey God. God wants warriors, not wimps. Jellyback season is over. He wants holiness. He said, I want you to be holy because I am holy. So if you're going to fight, fight sin. If you're going to fight, fight demons. If you're going to fight, fight in the spirit. Fight the good fight of faith. But don't fight people. Don't fight in arguments. Come on now. Okay. I have fussed enough, and I don't want you throwing a fist through the screen, so I'm going to hush while I'm ahead. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus, help us take the authority you've given us in the spirit. Take authority over our flesh and shut our mouths when a conflict is coming, we do not have to engage. Show us the difference, Lord. Help us know when to and when not to fight a battle. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Father. Amen.